Hello, hello, hello. This is Chris Ferdinandi from GoMakeThings.com. And today I'm gonna to be walking through how to build your first web component from scratch. Uh, so we have a button. Uh, here's the HTML for it, literally just a button. Um, and it says clicked zero times. And the component we're gonna be building today, uh, what we're gonna do is it's gonna be a counter component. So every time someone clicks or presses or activates that button, we're gonna update the text to reflect the number of times it's been clicked. Um, so really straightforward, super cliche example. I love it because it's basic enough that it makes it really easy to follow along with a new piece of tech. Uh, really quick before we dig in, uh, if this topic seems interesting to you and you wanna hear about more like it, uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, YouTube likes it, it shares my video with more people. You'll make sure that you find out about new ones when they come out. Um, also, if you really love topics like this and you want to get them more frequently, over at GoMakeThings.com, I publish a short little newsletter that comes out every weekday on how to build a simpler and more resilient web. With that out of the way, let's dig in. Uh, so I'm going to jump over to uh, my text editor. And the very first thing that we're going to do, because this is a web component, is we're going to wrap it in a custom element. I'm going to call this one WC Count. Um, one quick note about custom elements and web components specifically is you are not allowed to have single word uh, elements here. So I could not call this count. Those are reserved for browser native elements. It has to have at least one dash in it to signify that it is a custom element and not, um, not one that uh, is native to the browser. Uh, so WC count and then um, the next part of this as a web component, I don't know why that just translated to no script. There we go. Um, so the next piece of this, so we have a custom element, what transforms it into a web component, into some sort of interactive element, is using the custom elements define method to define, as the name implies, our new custom element. Uh, and so what you do is you pass in the name as a string, and then you pass in a class that extends the HTML element class as the second argument here. Uh, and because this is a class, we're going to create a constructor, and this constructor is going to run on every single element that exists on the page and instantiate it. Uh, so we'll say uh, instantiate our new component. Inside the constructor, one little kind of weird quirk here is you need to run the super method. Um, and what this does is it tells this new custom element to inherit the properties and, um, and methods of that parent class, that HTML element. So uh, we'll say inherit parent class properties. Uh, and then uh, just to kind of show that this is working, we're going to say running and then this. Uh, and if we jump over to the browser and reload, we get running. And then inside our, our constructor and inside our class, this is going to refer to the current instance and the element that goes along with it. In this case, WC count. And that's going to be really handy for working with our element, as we'll see in a minute. So um, the very first thing we probably want to do is add some, um, some state data. So let's go ahead and we'll define some instance properties. The very first one is going to be the count. So we're gonna keep track of how many times the element has been clicked. And we're gonna do that by assigning a count property to our instance. And we'll give it a value of zero. We also wanna get the actual button so that we can keep track of when it's been clicked and update the text in it. Uh, and we will do that by using the query selector method to get the button. Um, so I would help if I could type, we're going to look for the button. Now, normally you would do this on the document, but one of the really awesome things about web components is you can scope the things you're searching for to the element, uh, itself. So by using this query selector, I can search for button elements just inside my web component rather than having to rely on some additional selector, which is a really, really kind of handy benefit of working with web components. So uh, at this point, uh, here we go. I will, I'll log this just so that we can see what we've got here. So we've got this count and this button, uh, which again, it helps if you spell it right. 
uh, this Batoon would not be a thing. But so you can see we've got uh, zero as our starting and the button inside our web component. Um, so the next thing obviously we wanna do is add some interactivity. And the way we're gonna do that is we're going to listen for click events on this button. So we will say this uh, button, add event listener, click. Um, let's say listen for click events on the button. Now, normally you would pass in a callback function, but one really kind of cool thing you can do with web components because they are built around classes is pass in the instance itself instead of some sort of callback function. With the add event listener method, if the second argument is an object rather than a function, if that object has a handle event property on it, it will automatically run in response to your event and the event object will automatically get passed into it. And because classes are objects under the hood, we can take advantage of this. One of the reasons why this is awesome is inside the handle event method, this, the current instance, maintains its scope. Uh, if you were to pass in a callback function, this would become the function or the window or some other thing depending on kind of the context. But doing it this way preserves access to this, which allows us to access those properties without having to resort to weird hacks like using bind or something like that. Um, so uh, let's say um, uh, handle events and the event is the event object. So we'll just document that as we go. This should also probably be doc blocker format just for consistency. Um, cool, so inside our handle event uh, method, for right now we'll just say button was clicked just so that we can keep track of it and make note of the fact that it's happening. Uh, and if we jump over to the browser, you can see every time I click the button now, my handle event function runs. Um, so at this point now, we want to actually update the DOM. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say this count plus plus, and then we can update the button. Uh, so we'll say this text content equals, and um, I'm gonna use template literals because they make it really easy to update the string. So we've got clicked zero times, we'll say clicked, this count times and now you can see every time I click the button or activate it with keyboard events the text inside that button automatically updates so the last thing I want to do here um, is add some accessibility updates so uh, one thing we can do to make sure screen readers kind of announce the changes to the text here is add um, an aria live region to the button. Uh, so what we can do is we can say this button set attribute aria live. We'll give it a value of polite. Uh, and we're gonna do that inside the constructor because we want it to run just once when the element is instantiated. So now we've got aria live equals polite. Um, I'm not gonna do it because it's gonna get really noisy, but if I opened up the screen reader on my computer, Every time I click the button and that text updates, it then gets announced to the screen reader so they also understand what's happening, that the content inside this element is changing visually. Uh, so that's it, that's first web component. I wanna make sure I drop the source code to this down in the description so you can go check that out, download it, play around with this yourself. Um, but web components are awesome. If you want me to keep making more videos around web components and cool stuff you can do with them, uh, leave a comment. Uh, down below so that I know um, and I'll make more of these. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.